Well, how's it going? I know it's been a while. Um, just been real busy lately, but I have another project. This time, something a little different from my engine projects. I have a uh, machine shop kit that I've been looking for for a long time. And uh, I'm going to go and, and get it set up and uh, find a spot for it on the layout. This was a uh, Stone Mill Models Monarch machine kit. I've been looking for it for a long time, and it showed up on eBay uh, a couple few months ago, and I snagged it. So Stone Mill Models was a small one-man shop operating somewhere out of Mass, and uh, I have a few of his buildings on my layout. So this is, this is one that... I kind of built the shell and did some mods, like I added these freight doors, did the paint job on it, and it never did make it to the layout, but this is, I think this is kind of his namesake uh, kit. For a while, he was selling um, his kits on eBay under the username of uh, Tree Factory, I think, so if you're looking for these, you may want to look for his, his store, but uh, this never did make it to the layout. Beautiful kit. I think the prototype lives in Sudbury, Mass. And uh, I was going to put it uh, on the layout when I was doing some expansion of the Northbrook town scene. It just never made it. So let's go out to the layout. I'll show you his other kits I have on the layout. And uh, then we'll come back in here and I'll talk about my plans for this. Here's one of his other kits. This was the uh, Chama Oil House. And uh, another resin kit. These were all made in the early 2000s. Uh, he had his own website at one time. Um, this was on my old Greenbrook layout in the uh, engine yard area. Uh, this is a possible location for that machine shop. I'm kind of thinking I might put it on a slight angle here and cut into the uh, embankment there a little bit. I don't know. Uh, the other idea was it was going to go here on the corner and I was going to move the old uh, scratch-built Dream Shack house here to somewhere else. So I, I really kind of want to go through and freshen up this this scene a little bit here. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to build that Monarch machine as a shell. I'll paint it and get it to the point where I can place it on the layout and start to visualize where I just want to land it. So let's go look at a couple of his other kits I have on my layout here. This was his Sheridan Mercantile kit. And... The uh, prototype escapes me, but it was, I thought it was somewhere in the Midwest. It was part of a freight house, or it may have been like an ice house or something. I remember I, I had the uh, website link for it years ago, and it just disappeared. This is such a nice model. I turned it into like a motor repair shop, and uh, just kind of sits back here, back of the layout. I did these um, brass gutters, and I uh, tried to paint them to look like... Uh, oxidized copper really neat kit um just sits back here on this this alley and then this would be the other one this golden pipe i think i got this from his ebay store when he was selling more actively um it's actually just got a mild interior like if you see the checkerboard floor i never really fully furnished it or anything and as a matter of fact none of the buildings are really lit in this in this scene here other than the uh, angels flight hotel which i don't have the lights on right now but this was another one of his kits and you can see his resin kits had really nice resolution real nice um execution and very little cleanup as you'll see on this this other kit and i love the contrast of the stone wall with the uh the brick front here so so yeah i have a few of his kits there's one kit he made that I'm trying to find, and this was kind of a copy of it. It was a building flat he made. It was called Atlas Warehouse, and it was kind of like a New England style mill. Um, really hard to find. I wish I could find that, and uh, I don't know. We'll see, maybe. But anyway, that's my uh, Stone Mill Models collection, and uh, let's go back in the shop, and uh, I'll show you what I want to do with this. This uh, other kit. Across my workbench here, I have several models of an electric motor-driven lathe. And I even have these little, like, 
high school shop style ones that I doodled up in Tinkercad. And I've got some pretty generic looking Bridgeport lathes. Um, these were some free CAD uh, drawings I got off the internet and scaled them for O scale and just made some minor mods to them. Um, the electric lathe uh, or motor driven lathe here uh, is a, something I doodled up in Tinkercad. And these were the first shots here. And these were the final ones. I, I got uh, three different sizes. And most of this stuff came out okay. I had to play around. I got my levers to come out on here. And I don't know if you could see that, but there's, there's kind of a logo. Right now, they're just, they were printed in black resin. And uh, I just spritzed them with a little uh, Tamiya primer. So these are okay. I never really tried to do something this complicated, I guess. Maybe that, uh, maybe that set of pilots for the uh, LS25 project, but... These were pretty complicated, uh, for me anyway. I'm, I'm just good enough to be dangerous. I want stuff that's presentable for my layout. I think these will look fine um, in kind of a darkened or dimly lit old machine shop. So I might play with these a little more, but that's the general idea. I also made some desks. I had printed these out before um, on my FDM Creality printer. These are okay. I, I had some trouble with the resin. I left it in the tank too long. And it got really thick, so I've got fresh resin now, and I think I'm ready to try some new ones. This is going to be a parts bin, and I had printed these on the uh, Creality printer in FDM at one point, but I didn't, wasn't able to get these front boards on, on here. So I don't know if you can see. There should be some nail hole details. Um, these are not good prints at all, but I'm going to use them. They're they're kind of. They're kind of uh, old and beat up looking. By the time I'm done painting them, I think they'll look cool. But um, I, I was just burning up the rest of this this resin I had that was really like thick for some reason. And uh, I'll still be able to use these. So I'll fill them all with junk and, and paint them up and they'll look pretty cool. I'm going to print a lot more stuff too. And I have, a, uh, I have an order from uh, NGMC, a bunch of detail... Um, white metal detail castings and things like that for the shop. So I'm going to really detail this out real good. The, the lighting will be a lot like the uh, Northbrook shops, the uh, car and diesel shops at the front of my layout. I'm going to do my own home-brewed LED lighting, and it uh, should be pretty cool. As you can see, there's some really nice resin brick detail here. Very little cleanup, you know, just chip off some of the uh, floaties, I guess, clean up the window openings and uh, just give it a good wash. And then I'll, I'll assemble the, uh, I'll assemble the four walls um, and then make a base for it. I always make bases out of this quarter inch MDF. That's what this one's on too. So um, it'll, it'll make for a very robust little structure. I haven't decided what I want for a floor. If I want like a plain, like grease stained concrete floor, or if I want a real greasy, oily wooden plank floor, I'm still trying to decide. We'll see. Here's the window and door castings. Like I said, for, for resin, they're real nice. Good definition. They'll clean up real nice. And it, it, it's going to be kind of cool to have a, a, a building like this with arch windows, nice big window panes you could see into it. I probably won't dust these up as much as I've done on some other buildings I've, I've done lately. I don't know what these are supposed to be, if they were like roof caps or something, but they're all kind of broken up. I'm just gonna toss them. No reason to salvage these really. I might have to come up with some kind of coping cap Maybe I'll 3D print that, come up with a design, get a nice proper uh, terracotta coping like you see on the old buildings. All right, so I'm setting the windows right now and just kind of uh, filing out and sanding these openings to get a, to get a good fit. I'm trying to get like a, a little bit of a friction fit here. Um, when you work on these resin kits, and uh, some of these like um, hydrocal kits like uh, Downtown Deco takes a bit of a sense of humor, I think, 
to uh, get this stuff fitted up. It's, it's kind of rough work. The idea is you, you just try to get stuff rough together here. And, and these windows are being CA'd in right now with some just Gorilla Glue. I really like this thick stuff you can get at Home Depot. And I just hit it with some Insta Set just to get it in there. Here's an assembly I did already. So they're trimmed and cleaned up, CA'd in. And then I'm, I'm just using some testers putty to go around the gaps. What I'm gonna do later on is probably just put some simple trim boards around this door, nothing too fancy. And I'll probably put some wainscoting across these, these walls on the insides. I gotta cut the, uh, probably cut the transom off this door here. It's gonna fit in there like that. Here's all the stuff I trimmed off those windows. All right, so there's some great things happening here, I think. I um, decided to make some roof beams with my uh, FDM printer. So what I did was I interlocked them so that I could assemble them in such a manner here that uh, I can maintain some spacing. You see I have the holes already piloted for the uh, lamp fixtures and things like that. So this ought to look pretty cool. When I finish gluing it up here, I'll show you what's going on. All right, here's one of the cross beams going in and I have it slotted to host my uh, wiring for the LEDs I'll eventually put in here. So uh, I got this CA together. Whoop. Just give it a little activation there. Get the other two in now. So that's the idea. Should look pretty cool. Yeah. So in the midst of all this chaos, I don't know if you can tell what I made here. This is um, something I always wanted on my buildings. It's these old uh, terracotta Camelback wall copings. See them on a lot of old buildings. So I resin printed a bunch and uh, I even made some corners. All right, so these windows are very fragile. I have my coping on. Some of them cracked a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. This building's gonna be pretty Heavily weathered, not like abandoned style, but like uh, like a shop worn look. These windows are so fragile, though. Really nice. Um, I did try to uh, see if I could find. Them. I did play around and I resin printed one, but it's way too thick. So I don't know. Anyway, I got the one replaced. I couldn't believe it came out. I'm gonna patch it up. 
and then uh, start priming this. Not that stoked on that door, but that's good enough for being an, an interior. If I was really good, I would have made these open up or something. So I might do it with this. I'm not sure yet. Let's see. All right, so as you can see, fully well primered here. I just used some Rust-Oleum here. I like this stuff a little better than the 2X. I don't know. Um, anyway, with a coat of primer on there, you can see the nice brick detail in this resin kit. It helps me to see some stuff like this too. I'll clean up before getting the final color. And uh, so what I'll start doing is laying on the interior color, which would be white. And I was kind of thinking of doing wainscoting in here, but I just might paint the lower four feet like a dark green or something. All the beams will be painted white too, I think. And then um, paint the windows. No, actually, mask from behind. Then I can paint the windows, mask the front of the windows, and then I can paint the brick. I think that's how I'll do it. <laughs> anyway, we'll see. But usually I start from the inside out on these. All right, so I got my first wall color on in there. And uh, it's a mix of um, some old Model Masters aged white and uh, reefer white. So that's the first color. And uh, not too worried about all the flaws and voids and things like that in these walls because they're gonna be distressed. They're, they're gonna look pretty dirty and dingy from the inside. I'm trying to decide on the uh, color down here. I don't feel like installing wainscoting, so I think I'm just gonna do a second color. Probably like a nice um, gray green. So I really wanna get the paint on this thing and then get these windows glazed because these muntins or whatever are so fragile. I'm afraid of just sticking my thumb through it handling this. So I got some fuzz on my PLA printed beams. So I've been kind of hitting it with some steel wool. Maybe someday I'll try that ABS style. It might behave more like what I'm used to. But anyway, we're uh, making some progress here. All right, so here's some more painting and masking progress. I got a nice base coat of some old Model Masters Oxide Red for the basic brick color. And I use these. AK weathering pencils to just kind of randomly pick out some different bricks. And then uh, I hit it with some cheap uh, 2X clear here. So uh, when I mortar this, I don't bleed the color from the uh, brick into the mortar and just make a, a mess. So here's the interior at this stage. And uh, I'll take off I'll take this uh, masking tape off here. I'll show you the, the window color I chose for this building. So here's the color for the windows and the doors I chose. It's just um, Vallejo gray black. Um, airbrushed over some of their chipping medium over the original primer, just to give me some minor chipping effects. I gotta paint this section here, some kind of concrete color. And then uh, next phase is um, do some mortaring and try to apply my uh, decal painted wall sign on here, see if I can get it to look cool. All right, so here's the basic concept of my uh, mortaring. I just use, I use this lightweight spackle. I really like this stuff and you just rub it in with your finger you know uh, the added benefit is it's kind of gap filling too um, and depending on how distressed of a look you want to go for you can leave some areas blank but you know I 
just rub it in with my finger and then and I could take a little bit of water too with, you know and just buff it in there it's all kind of fun in a weird way <laughs> So yeah, I don't really use any paint for mortaring. I, I just prefer this lightweight, water-based spackle. I think it just works the best. I'll just do this for a little while. You can see the uh, different color bricks I, I picked out. They kind of look a little more natural once you start mortaring. Um, once I'm done with the mortar, I'll just do another quick coat of uh, matte clear here just to uh, kind of seal it up. So when I do the final washes and streaking and stuff like that, I'm not smearing it all over the place. You can see a little bit of color bled down here. I don't know if you can tell, but then if that happens, you can just kind of smear some more spackle over it or just completely wash it off so before you clear it all right so it's fully spackled up and i got another coat of clear over it I'm just gonna wait for it to dry and uh probably in the meantime work on some other things all right so here's my uh decal failure number one I have to paint a white background on the brick here. Apparently when I made these, the white did not populate at all. And the first failure was I forgot to uh, spray clear over this stuff. So being that it's inkjet printed, when I put it in the water, it just floated all the black off of the, uh, off of the decal. So, all right, we'll, we'll try this again. All right, I think this is what I was going for. Um, I wanted this painted sign look without having to actually paint it, like using a stencil. And in the past, I've done this with paper, um, but I thought if I use decal paper, which I've only started messing with lately, I could get it to really lay on the brick. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm, I'm doing some uh, micro set on it now, and seeing how, how well I can lay it in there. And you, you can see I painted uh, just a white stripe, used some reefer white, just painted a stripe across the brick. Nothing too fancy. Um, I did manage to save one of my stars here, but I think I'm gonna have to print, print this again. Uh, like I said, when you use the inkjet printer, just uh, you'll have to clear it with that, with anything, just some uh, matte clear spray just to keep the uh, ink from coming off with the water so I think that's what I'm going for I think that's pretty cool so uh, let me get the other half of this on here all right so this is all I'm doing nothing terribly fancy but it gives me the background for these decals I'm rather pleased with the way this came out I think um I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll, I'll clear coat it again just to protect it. And I'll, I'll try to trim off some of this extra film on the corners, but I think it should give me a nice, you know, a nice painted look. So, yeah. All right, so this is what we got. Kind of experimental, I've never really tried to do this before. So I'll trim these up, run some clear coat over it, and uh, continue on. All right, so I've been printing some more uh, items for the machine shop with my resin printer, as you can see. Got some more parts bins, seem to come out all right. And uh, this is my hydraulic press. I got three different sizes. I'm pleasantly surprised with these guys. Um, I'm getting a little better at getting this stuff to come out without distortion. Um, some of these are a little cattywampus here. Like this one looks like it uh, 
Got a little bit too much uh, Pascal's Law there or something. Anyway, I also have these nice um, downspout assemblies. So I have some nice leader head um, details on here. What I found out about making these long skinny pieces in the resin printer is I, I run a core through them in the design. Um, I think I just had like a one, maybe a half millimeter hole that ran the length of these. Uh, I could be all wet on that idea, but I, I kind of think uh, keeps the stuff a little straighter when it cures up for some reason. So, yeah. So you saw my, oh, I'm sorry. Get this out of here. Here's a, another project sitting here. Here's some of my door and window tech. Um, these items here were printed on my FDM printer. Uh, I switched to using Cura for a slicer, and I'm getting much nicer, cleaner prints and um, better curves and stuff like that. These are going to be the inside window frames. So the, the primered side here will be painted to match the inside um, color of the walls on, on the interior. I also made kind of an interior door skin for the front doors. And I'll probably tacky glue some acetate to these windows and then glue them in place. And that'll help me set set these windows. Uh, doing everything I can to maintain the original resin windows. They're very fragile. So I want to back them with something more than acetate. And I kind of wanted to just frame them. It won't be 100% architecturally correct but it'll be good enough for an interior where you know mostly the walls are going to be the background of all the machinery and stuff I'll put in here so make it steady progress all right so here are the uh, fruits of my resin printing efforts I guess these are my storage bins I just simply glued some scrap styrene and other stuff from my junk boxes ca parts on there and uh, i have a few of these already I, I made but with my old uh well with my fdm printer um with a resin printer i was able to put these like uh front boards in here you can see there's actually nail hole details in there these would be pretty nice um so these will like print some extras for future projects and these are some white metal details I bought. I've got this nice cart I could put different things on. Some bench grinder, well, actually just a disc sander and a, not a bench grinder, but just a regular pedestal grinder, I guess. And these are my downspouts. Um, so I painted them brown first, some roof brown, and then this is actually uh, Penn Central Green. Um, another color I added to my collection years ago when I knew this uh, polyscale was going away. That makes a really good copper color, I think. Um, these are my punch presses. These, these are my designs in Tinkercad. I made different size ones. And... Uh, Made a little mini version. And these are the stylized lathes I, I made too out of resin. So I'm gonna put them in my storage bin here for my shop details. When they're ready to uh, deploy, I will have them at the ready. Okay, so here's another wave of detail parts. Some of them are from my collection. Some of these resin crates, um, I usually have them primed and uh, ready for painting somewhere uh, in storage same with these these are resin barrels from uh same collection as these guys and uh, just glued in some garbage from my scrap bins painted it up some of these uh white metal details like the ladder this uh grinding sharpening stone and some other things like this workbench that i added some more details to these came from uh narrow gauge so they're like white metal castings. This castings are real nice and clean. I, I got all these nice bench visors. Even these are cored out. You could probably put like a pipe in there, you know. I got these toolboxes. Can never have enough of those. I got this. I always thought this was a Crow River part. 
So this will get mounted to a pole somewhere in the shop. And uh, a real nice, like, not a pallet jack so much, but maybe a lift table. I don't know, old school style. I, I'm assuming there's uh, some hydraulics in here. Pretty nice. So I'll put this uh, batch of details away in my uh, tackle boxes there. Here's some of the other details. These are white metal castings. I used a bunch of these in the um, in the Northbrook machine shop, the one that's just called machine shop, which would have been the downtown Deco Kozak's machine. Um, and I also used some of these in the Northbrook uh, car shop that Altoona Model Works building. This here is a nice, I think that's an Altoona Model Works lathe. So when I made these um, 3D printed resin lathes and stuff, you know, I kind of, follow the spirit of the kind of um, white metal parts you would normally buy. You know, the detail, well, yeah, that's heavy. Jeez, that thing is very heavy. You know, the detail really only has to be so good since they're gonna be inside a structure all the time. And uh, so these are painted up and ready to use in the future. These are the uh, cubby holes. I'll make more of these and just keep this stocked up. Some of these wrenches I actually 3D printed um, and just kept them. Uh, some of them didn't come out so good. Some of them broke up, but I was able to reuse them. And then here's my presses. I think next time I do these, I'm gonna run a core up through the, uh, through the cylinder so it doesn't warp on me. And I think I may try a different type of um, primer on these guys just to keep some of the crispness of the details. I got some of that Tamiya fine surface primer. I usually save that for things like this, so maybe next time. So yeah, I will put this stuff away and I'm actually gonna stay printing. I got some more, I've got some more, um, lathes and stuff I, I designed up and I'm going to run them through the uh, resin printer. The other thing too is see how these are solid. What I think is going on, some of them end up a little warpy. Um, I'm going back to these designs I did in Tinkercad and I'm coring them so that maybe uh, if I don't use as much material, they won't tend to warp as much. I had a little bit of distortion on these guys. Nothing too bad. Um, like I said, again, these are going in the interior, so, uh, it's not, not, not too bad. Look at all these nice barrels. I got a bunch of barrels and stuff. I'll show you. Here's some extra stuff. I keep them, they're all primed up. I primed them all when I got them and just kept them in these bins. I got some other interesting stuff too. I don't, I don't know what that is. I guess it's, uh log bin use it somewhere um so i have oh yeah here's here's all my barrels i just i try to do these in small groups it gets a little tedious to sit down and that's a resin cast to sit down and do like more than a half dozen of these at a time all right this is a collection of raw castings that are just loose. So as time goes on, I will populate these bins with parts. Like I said, when I paint these up, try to do some extras for future stuff to have in reserve. Here's a pretty nasty bin of pure scrap. These are parts that failed somehow and uh, I clean out my airbrush into here. And maybe someday these will become uh, junk loads for a gondola, but I reach in here quite a bit. I, this is where I got the scrap to put in those parts bins. And uh, I just keep this around and I just blow my airbrush into this as I'm cleaning out the uh, weathering colors. All right, so all my LEDs are tested out hooked up to my 32 gauge magnet wire, my little test rig here. I think I'm gonna go with a separate power supply 
for this building so I can dial in the uh, brightness levels once it's on the layout. Um, these LEDs are curious in the sense that they have a very large forward voltage drop, like around two to three volts at full at full brightness, which I which seems to correlate to uh, I don't know, like about nine milliamps. So that's why these when you set these up, they seem to need a uh, lower voltage. To the uh, dropping resistor the uh, forward voltage is really high but it's got a very low current to get the brightness out of them so i've noticed that over the years with these guys so when i set these up all right so i've tested out all my leds with my 32 gauge magnet wire leads when i set these up i usually just make one lead longer than the other and I can never remember which side goes negative. It's the if, if it's the anode or the cathode. I have to look every time. I don't know why. I just can't seem to remember that. But anyway, I only made like two of the nine of these backwards, so we're good. They all work too. And the other thing, I use my you know hacko with a a small tip here. But the um, breakthrough I had on this job was I remembered this stuff called solder paste, and I did order some. I didn't get to use it on this job but on the next one when i uh, do another set of these i really like to make my own because i make my own lighting fixtures with this uh, one millimeter tube and um i just think it comes out looking a little more precise anyway i think i'm going to use a separate power supply here too so i could dial in the brightness these smd uh white led variants are kind of curious in the sense that they have a very large uh, forward voltage drop, like like three volts or something. So I think the desired brightness ends up down around four millivolt, uh, four milliamps. So I have, um, I'm gonna use a set of 1K resistors, probably end up, you know, probably around five or six volts out of this thing. So um, when I get when I get them installed, we'll do a final test on them. The other thing I like to do is just dip these in a uh, CA. I do like to dip these in CA just to kind of insulate the, uh, the solder points on the back of them. So when I put them in my fixtures, I don't short them out. 32 gauge magnet wire fits very comfortably in this one millimeter tubing I found. All right, so here is my general idea of the lighting. So these are the main fixtures. And this is how I planned on routing the, uh, the leads. I should have painted the center beam first, but it's not a big deal. So I'll have to figure out some kind of uh, central conduit to come down the back here. So the next, the next uh, activity will be making the uh, gooseneck fixtures for the outside. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I had to print a new center beam with a slot to host my wiring. So I'm going to try to show you how I've been making these goosenecks. So I made this, I just made this crappy bending fixture out of some scrap that I had laying around so I can get the basic gooseneck or shepherd's crook or whatever you want to call this. So, and here's one of these Scale City lampshades. And if I can find it, my LED, which is still taped up here so what I found was that if I could estimate the length of this get it cut and do this first bend and then uh, thread this magnet wire through my lampshade here and then it seemed to make it through this bend okay this is um 
one millimeter uh, brass tube. And it's about the smallest hollow brass tube I could find. And uh, I think it's it's pretty good. It's, it's maybe a, a little bit oversized for like maybe a one inch conduit like this would have been maybe in real life, you know. But this is a basic concept here. Feed these leads through my tubing and comes out the other end and I can safely pull it through and uh, this varnish is actually a little more robust than you would think. I got three of them total. Well, what's going on here now is I'm trying to put the finishing touches on the interior painting. So, uh, I'm using one of these foam brushes here to do just a, a black and brown grunge wash. And I really like using these brushes a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm using a couple other brushes to get into the corners and stuff and work the colors in there. But I don't know if you can see that streaking on the uh, lower section of the paint. Don't think I'm gonna do much more painting in here. I had a lot higher ambitions for this building, but it's been laying around the shop for so long now. I, I think I'm gonna try to get it done here. So I'm just about ready to assemble this onto the pad. Show you what that looks like. Here's my concrete pad. So I've got some wash into the cracks and stuff like that. I'll do a couple other things to it. probably just dry brush over it a little bit but it's pretty much ready to go and then I'll have to do uh, just a little bit more touch up in here but I want to get this assembled as one unit as you can see these annoying flying magnet wire leads are really getting on my nerves so I, I got to get this together figure out what I want to do um, for the interior layout and then I got to fashion a roof for it, things like that. I'm really looking forward to doing the weathering on the outside. Um, at this point too, I'm just trying to decide how much work I really want to put into this. I really want to get it onto the layout at some point. All right, so here's the basic idea. You can see I put these locator holes in my beam supports. If I were to do this ever again, I would have printed these hollow and ran my wires through there. This is why I ended up with all these leads coming out uh, down each support. So right now I'm about to pull this together. All right, so here it is. It's gonna go together here. I'm just trying to get the floor married up here so that we don't squash out my leads from beneath those conduits. I really didn't want to do those conduits down each column, but that's just the way it worked out. So, and then what I'll do is I'll be nice and patient. I'll, I'll probably glue this up with goo or uh, goop, or whatever's laying around, something that sets slow and has some flex to it so I can get this all aligned. And then uh, at some point I can get these into my uh, columns so that's about what it's supposed to look like here's how I like to do my brick I just start off with a black latex wash and just run it down the water I'm using has a couple drops of uh, dishwashing liquid in there so it's acting like a wetting agent so it lets the uh lets the wash travel freely i like to do this and then this is really fun actually um so you, you can take like a kind of a your rough color your, your paint job here and you can start bringing it to life um the other thing it does too is it kind of helps 
sort of harden up all the paint edges, you know, and anywhere you have paint separation um, sinks into the cracks. And you'll start to notice you get kind of more of a, a sharpened look. So it's kind of cool. Um, so I don't go too crazy painting in a line sometimes on stuff because at this stage you can start either uh, kind of highlighting or, or contrasting the differences or, or even, you know, hide it. So it's a cool thing about weathering. So I'm going to do this for a little bit. And then sometimes I'll get the uh, hair dryer going on here. Um, one thing I'm careful about is not crazing up the windows. And uh, what I'll also do is I'll, I'll use a uh, smaller brush to get in places like in behind this downspout, you know, and tease it out. So go look at brick buildings and everything is obviously running downhill. You'll also see a lot of variance in where uh, grime sort of tends to uh, settle out. All right, so here's where we're at on the first pass of the uh, dark wash here. I also decided to uh, spackle this gap along the bottom here. Decided not to try putting any more glue in there. So I will wash over that and it'll blend right in. So that's where we're at. So here it is on a layout, just a quick color test. Just to see what I'm thinking. I wish I could tone down the uh, sign a little bit, but I don't know if I want to mess with it. So that's the interior. Almost ready to start doing the interior details. Test the lighting one more time, make a roof for it, and then see if there's anything else I want to do. Probably just maybe touch up some more of the uh, wash a little bit. Did a little bit of dry brushing on here. You see just the pop out details on my resin printed copper pipes, copper drain pipes. So it's getting there. I, th I, think, uh, I think we're making okay progress now. All right, so here's some progress on the machine works. As you can see, I've done some interior detailing, some minor signage, um, used a bunch of my resin printed parts and uh, a bunch of white metal parts for my stash. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you could tell, but um, I've got my roof in place. So I had really high ambitions for detailing this building out, but it's quite a small structure, you know? So I've decided uh, not to do a full bathroom in here and to rely on the viewer's uh, suspension of disbelief, I guess, to uh, not worry about things like that. <laughs> so I'm going to may maybe add a little bit more grime here and there, but I don't think I'm gonna do much more detailing, as you can see. I've got like uh, three or four lathes in here, some storage shelves. And ho hopefully I can film this better when we're done. We got a workbench, desk. I don't know if I'm gonna add much more detail to this. Uh, I think a lot of it will just get lost anyway. And um, I think for the size of the structure, I've got enough stuff in here. So here's my roof solution. I, I really wanted a, a roof with some industrial looking skylights and I had to space them for my beams. So I 3D printed these roof panels with these angled skylights and um, I printed a separate. Originally I was going to do these skylights separately, but, but then I decided I could print these roof sections um, with them already in there. So here's my window frames. So what I found was uh, 
quite pleasantly that this bonding stuff will glue up PLA quite reliably. So I really like using this stuff. Um, so the next step here is to uh, paint this and get my uh, rolled roof material on here and then I can finish up with the lighting and then I'll do another shop tour here. So I think it's coming along. Um, I think it looks pretty good for, for such a small building. A lot more work than I thought it would be. And like I said, my ambitions were kind of, uh, I don't know, recalibrated as, as this progressed. So I don't think I really have to add tons more detail. Maybe, maybe a couple little things here and there, a little more clutter, maybe some more grime on the floor and stuff like that. But I think we're, uh, we're almost getting ready to, uh, get this installed in the layout. I got to do my lighting next after my roof. So, okay. So the idea here is that I am wrapping this with this, uh, bandage tape basically to simulate some rolled roofing so it should look pretty good when I'm done painting it. I'm a little concerned that this uh, 3D printed texture is coming through though. So uh, I'm going to try to lay some paint on here pretty thick. Alright so here's my uh, LED wiring harnesses and uh, these are a dropping or ballast resistors. So what I ended up doing was, um, if I explained earlier, I, I ran a separate 1K resistor to each LED. And uh, as you can see, I split these up into three wiring harnesses coming out with some extension wires, 28 gauge. So I kind of go through the trouble of doing a separate resistor for each LED. Um, yeah, there's nine LEDs in this building. And I go through the extra trouble just in case, um, you know, one fails or something. Um, I've had some kind of mixed success with these LEDs. Um, I don't think these are like factory firsts, the ones that you, you get off eBay or whatever. So I've had some that just kind of either turn different colors on you or just burn at different brightnesses. So anyway, I just go through the trouble of the separate um, dropping resistors so I have full control. Um, so I was chasing out a few shorts and these wires, these leads, kind of a pain. Um, hopefully it doesn't give me too much trouble. I don't know if you can see, I had to CA some of these leads. It's probably from dragging this model around the bench and I dragged it out to the layout a few times for taking pictures. But anyway, let's hook this up. I'll show you what the, the lights look like. So here's our lighting. It's about three volts there. So I had uh, planned on maybe going to six volts, but we'll see. It's about five milliamps at uh, five volts. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see if I can find the, the roof. So it will have its own adjustable power supply. That way I can adjust the brightness to my liking. So here's my skylights. I think this ought to work pretty good. I didn't dirty them up too much. I made the mistake of dirtying up a couple of these buildings. Um, and then I couldn't really see that well through the uh, windows. I have a couple more little details to paint for this, but I think it's almost ready to get installed in a layout. So hopefully my uh, wiring survives and uh, I think we're in good shape. So here's about the general area I have picked out for the uh, North Brook Machine Works building. And the reason why I want it as close to the front of the layout as possible to show off all the details that I put in it. And 
I just think it it's a good kind of uh, semi-industrial space for it amongst this kind of residential urban area and uh, gives the uh, machine shop some nice access to all the industries around Northbrook and uh, good restaurants over here. We got the Chop Suey House. There's some bars and uh, other places. I think I have, boy, at least, at least four bars here. There's a pool hall. There's a bar. I think there's a bar in the card room there. And there's uh, Mahoney's Pub back there. So, oh, and then there's, I think I have five bars. There's another one there. Not not counting uh, Red's Bar there in the uh, Atlantic Hotel. So, uh, yeah, you stay pretty well li lubricated uh, in this town. Um, anyway, so what I got to do here is do a little bit of uh, terraforming here or re-terraforming. I got to modify this little hillside coming down. So my next task is to remove this structure and get this junk out of the way and uh, see how I want to situate the uh, machine works building. All right, I'm gonna pull all these details and scrap piles out of here. See what the space looks like without this building. Um, it was empty for a long time and uh, I can't remember if I had anything here before. Be right back, that's in there pretty good. Nice yeah, try it again. So I made this simple template. It's got a drill pattern on there for my LED leads. And what I'm gonna do is try to use this to determine the uh, general location, see how much of this scenery I gotta cut back. So I'm thinking it's gonna follow the angle of this alleyway right here. So, let me see what I gotta do. This is all foam in here, so it's uh, pretty easy to gouge away on. You can see. So I don't know, I uh, got to playing around with its location and the uh, angle of its attack here. <laughs> I don't know. And I think it looks kind of better following this alleyway here. So I can bring in kind of a front lot here, wrap something around the side and around the back for junk piles. So kind of thinking about it. This is kind of what it would look like if it was following the uh, road coming down. But I kind of don't like it there. I don't know. It looks kind of, I don't know, about a phase or something. So, maybe, maybe about here. Could have like a little mini sidewalk because there's a man door here. I think it looks good, this front aligned with the, the rear of the uh, pool hall here, and this utility pole. I may cut this little mound down a little bit. Let's see, if I go with this, I gotta make a decision soon, because I really wanna figure out where I'm gonna plant it so I can drill the holes for the uh, LED leads here. And then I can, um, 
kind of do some uh, land forming here. I didn't throw out any of my chunks because they may get put back, spliced back in and modified. But I'm thinking that angle's pretty good. The other angle we could follow is the front tracks, which would give you a clear shot into this side door. But I just don't think it look it looks cool from the front of the layout. Full side shot like that. I don't know. The problem is the signal bridge now. That's where it's gonna live kinda. Interesting. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this little hillock or whatever out of here, this little mound I made a few years ago. I already got most of the ground cover off it. And uh, just to play with this position, I, I think I'm going to follow this alleyway here. And it'll still give me a nice little set of scenes here. All right, so here's the basic layout of the uh, concrete environs for the machine works building here. So I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. Um, I'll just have this kind of front parking and loading area along with the side section. And uh, I'll probably blend it in with some junk piles and stuff like that. So you can see this little spot got a little smaller, so I may uh, reshape that little mound that was here and pile some junk against it. And as you can see here, I kind of spliced my hill back together. Um, turns out it's going to stay just about the original shape. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. I feel like that little spot I could almost embed a shack or something into. But not right now. In the future, I'll leave that for a future project. Right now, I'm pretty happy with the layout. I think the buildings complement each other. They seem to have sort of a natural arrangement. Like I said, I had a few angle options for this building. I think this was the best. This whole Northbrook lower town section is, is kind of on an angle um, that matches one of the sidings way back there behind Monarch. And uh, I kind of brought this street on an angle just for more visual interest so it's not 90 degrees to the front of the layout. So that's the whole idea, kind of skewing that angle a little bit, but it's actually kind of perpendicular to that siding way back there, which I think is probably like 22 degrees or whatever. So this is, this is about where we're at. We got kind of a cool little alley scene here, depending where I put the camera. You know, you can see the backdrop of the town so i'm going to get the hot glue gun out splice my hill back together get these fastened down do some land forming and then um do a nice wash over these panels these are just my standard one eighth masonite or mdf or whatever they call it sometimes it's called hardboard and uh sprayed with uh krylon or i think it's rust-oleum now um, camo khaki. It's a real nice flat color. Gives you a good base for concrete. I use it for a lot of stuff. Um, so we'll uh, continue on. So here's my concrete work in progress. Like I said, it's just masonite panels scribed and painted with rust-oleum khaki. And then what I'm doing is uh, I've got some just basic tube acrylics doing a black wash over it. And then kind of running a, just a brush, follow along some of the seams. And then uh, I use this nasty sponge brush here, this foam brush to kind of do a general wash over it. I'm using raw umber and I, I think, what is this, burnt sienna? I don't I always just call this rust. So I'm trying to get this to look like very well used grounds around a shop. So dragging rusty machinery and parts all around it so I'm gonna keep working on it a little bit probably not too much more and then I will start blending in the scenery take care of these seams and here's that little mound I just 
kind of cut it down. It made a small undulation here. It'll just get covered over with ground cover and, and some junk piles. That's about where we're at. This is the final scene here. As you can see, I populated the uh, area with some junk piles, some things out of my tackle boxes, my details ready to go. Kind of redid some landform here. And, you know, I got a nice scene here, I think. Um, add some interest to this curve. As we can see trains come around, this can come in and out of view. I have it on a nice angle so it can be viewed from the front of the layout. There's maybe like maybe a couple feet to the uh, side of this building. And, you know, a viewer could look through this door and these windows and, and catch glimpses of a machine shop that's ready for, for the tasks at hand. So here's how it looks. Excuse my shadow. So you can see it follows this little alleyway here behind a dream shack in the uh, pool hall. I think it worked out pretty good. You know, I could get creative with my camera angles and frame it just right. And it looks pretty believable, I think. I don't know. Got a removable roof, 3D printed, so I can show off the detail inside. Got to use my 3D printer. Both of them, some unique details you don't see very often. With these uh, roof copings and copper gutters and downspouts. Got to uh, play with my LED technology, my home brewed LEDs. It's a lot of fun. Here's a view from the other side. So here's Northbrook Machine Works. Get ready for second and third shift here at dusk. I suppose because Northbrook's industries never sleep. So I think the lighting's pretty good. I got a pretty good level of brightness on there. It doesn't look too gaudy or anything like that. As time goes on, I'd like to light all my buildings. I, I've slowly been going through some of these buildings at the front and doing lighting and interior projects. This I had done quite a while back. I just, I filmed it all, but never really put it together as a movie. There's some 3D parts inside here, plus my homebrewed LED lighting. Can you see that? As time goes on, I'll add more lighting to these buildings. So my machine shop kind of Compliments this one here that I did a couple few years ago. I really should have made the windows a little more clear. I'm really tempted to 3D print some with bigger panes so you can see inside, but I kind of like these dusted uh, panes here. The general idea here is to just front load the layout with nicely detailed structures, some eye candy. The front of the layout and eventually i'll probably go through and just keep doing this i've got some other building projects in mind too so this was my altoona works car shop very fun project and that just about wraps it up the only other thing i could think of is probably a couple things i would do differently next time like the uh, roof supports the interior beams you know i would be sure to slot all of them and probably core these verticals too so I didn't have to install these uh, so I wouldn't have to install these conduits 
that was kind of an afterthought as I ran into challenges with all the uh, the lead routing for, for the LEDs. So I think it complements the uh, front of the layout pretty well. It's got a nice angle to it, really easily viewed by people uh, at the front of the layout here. And you'll probably see it in the background of a bunch of videos in the future.